Let's kick off with my take at 10. St. Gary is at it again. The holier-than-thou sports presenter and Britain's first black footballer, Gary Lineker, has been to Italy to receive a humanitarian award from Amnesty. Couldn't we have an amnesty from this virtue-signalling numpty who rails against our unequal society and the poor treatment of migrants, but was broadcasting from the Qatar World Cup in stadia literally built by modern-day slaves, 6,000 of whom literally boiled to death in the midday sun or fell from scaffolding as they constructed his theatres of dreams. Lineker's latest offering is that Just Stop Oil protesters who are disrupting people's lives and risking an accident or death as they block major roads, are in fact heroes. That's right, Lineker has them down as heroes. This from Britain's most famous millionaire socialist, a man fresh from successfully battling HMRC to reduce his tax bill by several million pounds. And of course, he's back on the case speaking in rosy terms about immigration, whilst safely insulated from its real-world impact of depleted public services, a housing crisis and community tensions. Fair play to Gary for having taken in refugees over the years, and he's clearly passionate about this issue. But as migration figures reveal an extra 600,000 people entered the country last year, he's going to need a bit more space in that granny flat of his to accommodate them. Some have called Gary brave. Indeed, absolutely. Lineker is truly heroic and brave as he tweets from the luxury of his London mansion. How brave to virtue his signal and to make himself look like such a lovely guy when he won't be affected by the consequences of an effective open border policy, which is depressing wages, serving as a disincentive to Brits to get back to work, inflating the cost of rental properties, impacting communities and devastating public services. It's not Gary, but the millions of people who watch Match of the Day who will pay the price as their rent doubles, as they struggle to get a GP appointment or find a place in the local school for their kids. Now, if Gary Lineker was not employed by the state-funded national broadcaster, he could make these points all day long, no problem, just as I am on this show. But his status as the most high-profile and best-paid presenter on The Beeb gives him an undue influence on the national conversation and, in my view, threatens the reputation and threatens the hastening, the downfall of the organisation itself, the BBC, as millions of Brits exasperated by the colossal scale of migration into this country are puzzled as to why one of the organisation's biggest stars is such a fan. By having a dig at Home Secretary Suella Braverman and making a parallel between the Rwanda plan and the horrors of the Holocaust, Lineker is effectively calling the millions of Brits of all colours worried about the impact of mass migration as racist bigots. It's insane to think that net migration of 600,000 a year isn't a problem. And it's an issue that Italy, France, Germany and the United States are grappling with as well. If a country can't police its borders and have a sensible level of migration into the country, then it has fundamentally failed. In my view, Gary Lineker is on the wrong side of every argument. He's out of touch with the mood of the British people, and he's entitled to be. He can say what he wants, but not whilst in the pay of the state broadcaster, who will literally send old ladies to jail if they don't make their contribution to his £1.7 million salary. Gary Lineker has just picked up a gong from Amnesty International. Well, I've got another award for him, Britain's biggest plonker.